Hey, it's me again. In this video, we're going to talk about flabby skin, whether it's in the back of your arms, underneath your chin, or your legs, or your butt, or your hips. Let's cover what's underneath that. Now, in the past video, I've talked about cortisol, which is an adrenal hormone being the root cause of loose skin underneath your arm. But there's another very common cause, and that has to do with this one hormone called insulin, okay, but it's really a condition of insulin resistance. But let me just explain what that means. Insulin resistance is a condition where you have a ton of insulin, but it's not working, okay, because your body's resisting it at the cellular level, all right? Now, you need insulin. You def definitely, you cannot live without it. But the problem is we have too much of it because of our diets, so like sugars and things like that. But check this out. Your cells have a little window that allows insulin to drive fuel in the cells, but also insulin is one of the main hormones that drives amino acid into the cells. It's the hormone that allows the absorption of proteins, specifically branched amino acids. Now, what is branched amino acids? Now, you see this a lot of times in uh, people that are exercising, weightlifters, because branched amino acids are specifically good to repair and replenish lost muscle. Okay, so if you're losing muscle, you're atrophying, you would want branched amino acids. But the problem is the insulin is not working to pull those amino acids into the cell because you could have insulin resistance, right? But what caused this problem in the first is you had uh, you had too much insulin, and then now all of a sudden your body's rejecting it, and so now you're stuck with, you can't absorb insulin, yet you have too much, okay? It's kind of a weird situation. So in an in insulin-resistant cell, you really are kind of like your cells are starving for protein, amino acids, and fuel. So, so here's some symptoms with, to know that you have this. Number one, you can't lose weight. Number two, you have a belly fat. Number three, you have brain fog, fatigue. If you skip a meal, you get very irritable. You can't go a long time without eating. Um, when you're eating, you're not satisfied. When you're eating, you get tired right after you're eating. These are just common symptoms. It's kind of a pre-diabetic state. So what happens is you get this signal sent back to the pancreas that makes insulin and telling the pancreas, hey, we don't have enough insulin here, so go ahead and pump out more, more insulin because it's being blocked. So now the pancreas thinks that it doesn't have enough, so it's driving more and more insulin to, to force the nutrition into the cell. So you end up with a real bad situation because all that excess insulin creates uh, other issues. So here we end up with a, a body that doesn't have amino acids and you get flabby skin and aging and all sorts of issues with diabetes. Yet on the other side, all this excess insulin is creating belly fat, but also a lot of cognitive problems it will create something called an amyloid or amyloid fibril. What the heck does that mean? It's, amyloids are sticky uh, protein structures in the brain that are nearly always found in Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, dementia even. It's kind of like a ty diabetes type 3. It's also found in strokes. I'm going to put some links down there. So here's my thought. Obviously, you want to um, increase your, the longevity of your memory, your brain. You don't want to get Alzheimer's. Well, you want to fix this insulin-resistant problem because amyloids come from high levels of insulin, and that gets stuck in the brain, and the last thing you want to do is end up with a stroke. So they talk about clogged arteries, right? Well, but they don't talk about amyloids being clogging the arteries. They talk about cholesterol. Well, amyloid is a protein. Well, so is, so is uh, the cholesterol, too. It's a high-density lipoprotein, but that's a whole other uh, lecture. But the point is that you may find that you're getting brain fog and memory problems and you know, going into the whole Alzheimer's thing, realize that you want to fix this situation so that way the brain can start absorbing the fuel it needs and the protein it needs so you, your, your muscles can come back, the skin can start becoming tone. So let's just talk about what that means as far as what you have to do in your diet. Number one, Obviously, you have to get the sugars out, okay? And you may already know that. Uh, refined sugars, breads, pasta, cereal, crackers, things like that. Uh, secondly, you need to get the alcohol out of your system, out of your diet completely right now because that's going to create a problem. Uh, next one, 
never, ever, ever, ever combine um, protein with sugar, okay? Because that, that could be even like, um, like the breads with the bun and the pastries and all that stuff. When you add sugar to protein, you dramatically exaggerate the insulin. I mean, like goes way up. In fact, if you should add sugar to anything, it's actually even worse. You'd be better off eating sugar alone than you would combining it. So we don't want to add the sugar. Even if you add sugar and fat, you accentuate insulin. So we don't want to do that. Okay? Snacking will also uh, create this problem. So you don't want to snack between meals. Eating fat with the meal is not going to be a problem because it allows you to go longer. So fat is not the cause of insulin resistance, despite what some people might tell you. Um, sometimes they'll do experiments on rats using corn oil or so soy oil. Um, so it's, it's very, very cloudy as far as the research on that. But I found that you can easily do fats. And if you're concerned, just stick with coconut oil, uh, peanuts, and things like that. But we want that fat with the meal so you can go longer without eating. So you want uh, two to three meals a day, okay? So that's a really important thing. You want the greens in there. You want to avoid the foods that... Uh, trigger insulin. Okay, that's excessive protein, combining protein with sugar, sugar itself, and snacking. Those are the culprits right there. Uh, a couple other things. Let's say you drink coffee, right, and you drink a lot of coffee. All that caffeine is going to trigger more insulin as well. So if you're going to drink coffee, keep it a very small amount only in the morning, and then that's it for the day. Okay? So so getting your skin back is not about eating more protein. It's about finding out what's underneath it. Is it a stress state? Is it cortisol? Is it that you have no activity, like you're not exercising? I mean, that could be a situation because you need to work the body. Or is it this insulin resistance thing, which is actually very, very common? Okay, so I just want to enlighten you on this. Uh, definitely um, put your comments below. And uh, I have a link down there of a quiz that you can take too. So if you have a situation and you want to find out what's underneath it, uh, fill out the quiz and actually we'll send you a report that kind of tells us what's wrong with your uh, body as far as the root cause. Okay, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.